Hey guys, I'm going to do another walkthrough here of another new machine they've got here in the shop. And this is actually pretty new to me. Um, actually, the line bore machine in my last video was pretty new too. But this is actually something that um, I never thought I'd actually own. Just for the simple reason I had another machine set up to do this, this particular uh, concept. But um, I think after actually just playing around with it here, it's actually a real big benefit to the shop here and make me a little bit more efficient. This is actually a uh, hinge boring machine set up for a bloom pattern, which is actually what I use right now. Is I use bloom hinges, been actually using them for the whole time. Um, anyways, but as you can see here, this isn't a bloom mini press. This looks to be like something else you'd find in the catalog, and and actually it is a catalog item, but it's something I've never heard of before. This is uh, under the name, still underneath the name of Hardware Resources. Um, from my understanding, Hardware Resources is a retailer of a decorative, functional, um, I'm just trying to think of some other things, cabinet doors, uh, prefab vanities, mirrors, I think even sinks. Um, so they're, they're a resource and, and sales for a lot of those items. The one thing about this machine is, and I'll bring it a little bit closer, but it has an insertion ram which you can kind of see here. And basically you snap the hinge onto here, you push this down and you cycle it, and it'll actually insert the hinge after you've done drilling it. Now this one is actually set up right now to, uh, let me show you the pattern here before I get too far. This is the hinge pattern. All you see here, these holes are awfully big for pilot. And that's because they're designed to use a hinge um, like you see here with the uh, plastic dowels on the back. These are insertion hinges. Um, they still, it's the same hinge except they've added this plastic doll with the screws and the idea is you drill a hole and you stick this in the insertion ram and then you press this in. I can't, I mean they, they fit so tight that I can't press it in with my hand. Um, it takes a little bit of force to do that and if you can see here these plastic dowels are ribbed and it's a one way so once they go in you can't really get them out so ah uh, you can but it's it's a real pain so so that's the idea behind this is that you snap the hinge on the insertion ram after you're done drilling you snap this on and then uh, you basically press the hinge in right away. The uh, reason I won't do that, well actually I won't do it right now anyways, is uh, I pre-drill all of my doors prior to finishing. So what my plans are to do is I did a little research. Um, these are, uh, I think they're an 8 millimeter uh, hole. I'm going to replace them with a 2 millimeter bit. I just want to point out as well that the block that holds the hinge on the insertion ram will only work with the compact hinges from Bloom that do not have the integrated uh, Bloom Motion soft close in them. So that's the other reason why I cannot use the ram for the time being without some modification. Uh, the problem is, is that this 8mm hole has a 10mm shank and I can't get a 2mm bit with a 10mm shank so you have to use some adapters. So. I got to check into a little bit. I'll probably have my saw blade uh, sharpening service check into it for me again and probably get a couple more bits. Um, I've seen 3 millimeter, but I think 3 millimeter is going to be a little bit too big for number 6 screws. So um, I think my hardware supplier also supposed I was talking to a buddy of mine who uses the same supplier. But uh, yeah, so that's basically what this machine does is it counter bores the, um, uh, for the hinge and then also insert the hinge if you use the insertion ram. And I'll bring it a little bit closer now to show you. You might be wondering, like, it's like, well, why wouldn't you just drill your doors after? Um, I'm a firm believer, uh, simple being, simple reason being that whenever you handle products after they're finished, you have a real chance of messing them up, uh, scratching the finish, whichever. And I just, uh, just assume do this before. So the one thing I could do is I still could use this particular method but not insert insert the hinges I could insert the hinges later but then again like I said I really don't want to uh, set this back up on the machine there risk on scratching up the finish just to insert the hinges so for right now like I said I want to change these two um, holes here to a two millimeter. One thing about having a dedicated machine to counter uh, boring your hinge um, mortises or your holes or whatever you want to call it um, it, it frees up the drill press. In this case here, I had a drill press that I basically bought um, for um, a backup uh, for an actual drill press. And the little original drill press that I had, which you guys never saw, actually uh, the spring broke. And it was just a piece of junk to begin with. I think I paid 50 bucks from it for Harbor Freight. And it lasted a while. 
But um, then I had just basically taken the new drill press, which was the one I had set up last here for the European hinges, and just had that dedicated hinges. So now I'm actually freed up my drill press again because there's been countless times where I could have really used the drill press, but I didn't want to tear the drill press down from hinge boring. So, um, okay, so uh, the function basically. Um, bring it in a little bit closer. There's a couple stops here that are preset. Uh, I can move them in a little bit. I don't even know what the previous owner had these set at. It does look a little far. I like to go three inches on center. Yeah, he's three and a half. So I want to move these in uh, half of an inch if I can. I really want to keep to my three inches, but um, might not be able to. Uh, but I guess with that being said, um, basically is you just slide this up against your stop. Let's move this out of the way here. Let me make sure you can see what's going on here. Let's bring you in a little bit closer. Um, actually, let's go over the controls here first. Okay. All right, right now that's basically the way I would have it when I'm not using. I've got the power turned off. In this box here, there's a contactor with an overload for the motor. A um, couple uh, contact blocks with some selector switches here. And on the back side of the machine, which is pretty boring, but there's a couple solenoid valves that control the function of the, uh, the clamps and then the motion itself. So... Um, so basically you would turn it on and the light lights up. This here is to start the drill cycle. Uh, this one here is to turn your clamps on and off. And this one is basically to go from drill to press. So um, let me uh, show you here. So basically I'm going to bring your door in, slide it up against the stop, and then basically what I would do is push the start button, and I'd actually prefer to clamp it, so basically I'd turn the clamp on, and then push the start button. Okay. Now, if I was to use this hinge. I'd basically uh, snap this hinge in like this here. It's actually magnet. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it's magnetized and you just basically um, oh, there we go. Just set it in like this here. And then uh, you could flip this down and I uh, push it in. So I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. I might do it at the very end of the video just to show you as far as how it works. I, I did get a case of hinges as well. But, um, yeah, so let's bring it a little bit closer, and let's do that again here. Unclamp it. Gonna, gonna move it about in the middle here this time. Going to clamp it, and I'm gonna push the start button. And as you can see, that thing does coast for a while. So, and we can unclamp it. And uh, we have a nicely drilled, nice clean holes. And like I said, I really want to, uh, oops. Really want to replace these here um, with a two millimeter just for a pre drill for the number six screws that I use for the time being. So, yeah, and then, um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, nice thing is, is this unit, like I said, uses a lot of standard parts. The motor itself, like I said, is a standard uh, 56C. I think it's a 56, maybe it's a 56CZ. Um, 56C, so it's a standard motor. Uh, probably not in stock at a motor shop, at least a small one, but you know it's readily available um, through a motor distributor, so there's nothing special about it. Um, 
other than that it's a very simple machine that does a simple task but, but for me um, just changing the bits to a two millimeter uh, to a pilot hole when I go to screw in the hinges the holes are already the uh, holes are already there and um, just basically screw the hinge in place so like I said I might change it I might later on decide that hey let's start buying the uh, the press in hinges and they're a little bit more expensive they're probably about 10 15 cents so um, but if it really increase uh, labor savings that would be a, a, a nice deal the one thing that I will tell you that I am not super fascinated about is this is just one thing that I just do not like at all. Um, here's your air setup. Here is a oil dripper, an automatic oiler. I am not a believer in oil in the wood shop. Um, excuse me. Big reason it can lead to fish eyes. Um, the oil basically is to lubricate the cylinders. Um, you got a big air cylinder right here. Then you got your uh, clamp cylinders. And the one reason, like I said, I'm not a real big fan of it, number one, is um, this, whoops, right here. This is a blow off tube that is basically blowing off air that um, is bleed from the cylinders. And the nice thing about it is it actually um, blows away the, the chips. Well, for a pre-finished door, that'd be fantastic, but for an unfinished door, it's not a, not a good idea. So I'll probably do away with this for the time being and take the oil out. Um, I know the oil's there for a reason, but at the same time, I'm just not uh, excited about having oil in the wood shop or the cabinet shop because, like I said, it can uh, relate to a lot of finishing problems. And uh, here's a little bit closer view of the uh, uh, ram. Okay, so you just take the hinge, it just kind of clips on there, it's mag magnetized. You'd slide this down, and you'd press it in. So, um, you know what, I guess I'll just do a demo here of that, what the heck. I've got a new uh, scrap piece of plywood here, and basically you just can push it underneath that stop. I'm going to slide it over, I'm going to clamp it, watch your fingers, and we're going to start the cycle. Okay, now I basically slide this ram down. Actually, I'm going to do this. There we go. Um, there is a spot for dust collection in the shroud, so I'm going to have to think about doing that. But Okay, got the chips out of there. And now we're going to use the set and press. Here we go. Here we have it. We'll show it to you the right way. So, yeah, um, you know, I guess it's all right. But, like I said, I, I would prefer to change those boring bits out with a two millimeter and just pre drill for the time being. So, um, definitely be uh, worth my while for the time being. Um, the clamps are a little disappointing. They're actually really heavy duty, but you can't really turn them. So, uh, I would like to have them closer, but I guess it'd be really good for big doors because technically you don't have to um, clamp this. I mean, you could just do it just like this here. You move the insertion rod. So you can do it by holding to, and that's still all the way I did it for years with the drill press. So. Um, the only couple little things I did not like, um, we'll go into the electrical box here. First, we're going to turn the power off. And first of all, as you know, you got this weird knob here. Well, this isn't a knob that you can turn. This is actually a safety knob. So not everyone can just go in there. You have to have a, a key or a wrench, if you will, like this. And basically, you just slip this over here, turn it, 
and now you are into the electrical box. Uh, I'll bring it a little bit closer here. Um, this blue cord, that is not original. Um, it came with a different cord. It was just as stiff as this, if not worse. Um, I replaced the cord because it was too short. I wanted the mobility of moving this uh, hinge drill around. And um, what I did was I just went to Home Depot and picked up a $20 or 20, I think a $30 uh, 25 foot extension cord, uh, 14 2 with the ground, and uh, cut the ends off and uh, rewired it um, here into the uh, contact block and then, um, or the connection block, and then uh, put a uh, 20 amp, uh, 220 volt uh, plug on the other end, twist lock to match everything else in the shop here. Uh, but the one thing is, is that these grommets that they used. The cord that I pulled out was even smaller yet, it might even been 16 gauge, and he couldn't get this grommet tight enough. Now here I can still move this a little bit, but um, I should have actually taken some, probably still do it yet, push this up a little bit, wrap some electrical tape around it, and then torque this nut down. But here's another prime example. Here's the same cord basically, and you can just pull it around, and this is... Um, yeah, that's that's tight and it's not even gripping it. So they use the wrong grommets or the wrong cord. Well, no, I mean the cord's big enough. The grommet's too big. So because these come in different sizes from one uh, thickness to the other, but it's little things like that. But for what I paid for it, um, I really can't complain. Um, it does, however, have a uh, contactor, and that contactor is to start and stop the motor. Right below that is a thermal overload, and then just to the right of that is actually a circuit breaker, which I was really surprised to see there's actually a circuit breaker in there. Um, so, and then these switches here are for your um, your power light, your cycle button, your clamp switch, and then your drill and press switch. So, and right now it won't do anything because it is electrically controlled uh, for the pneumatics. So, now with that, close it back up with the uh, specialty wrench. So yeah, that's basically the function of this uh, hinge boring machine. Um, these aluminum, um, extruded aluminum tracks, you can slide in and out uh, for different support, but I've got it pretty much set up where it should support everything. I originally wanted to lay a piece of like half inch or three quarter inch um, sheet stock on here and maybe I've got some scrap laminate laminate make a nice slippery surface. The way I could do it is just basically replace this and make a top this thick and uh, would hold uh, serve the same purpose. Not sure yet but being that I pre-drill all my doors um, before I finish them and before I sand them I don't think it really matter for me. So the only one thing I want to do something different with is probably just um, eliminate this blow spout here uh, because I'm pretty sure that's carrying a very fine trace of oil so um, yeah so we'll see um, I'll probably drill a board and uh, um, finish it sand it up and finish it and see if I get fish eyes if I don't then maybe it won't bother me but there is some oil traces on this machine so I do want to clean it up but uh, yeah I mean uh, for what I paid for this um, it's definitely will help me out and um, it's just uh, real nice to be able to have something that actually save me some time so all right uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video and uh, questions and positive comments are welcome and if you're looking to see anything more on this um, you can leave me a comment below um, otherwise uh, if you need a little bit more urgent attention you could just um, send me a private message in my inbox as well so um, not always able to reply to comments for some reason so but uh, anyways um, thanks for watching and see you guys later